Hi, it's Ian from chesstape.com and our coverage of the 2012 South African Open continues. Board 1 in uh, round 9 is a clash of the Grand Masters with Antonio Fernandez, who was superbly held in the last round by Rodwell Mokoto, leading on 7.5 out of 8, and Grand Master Tala Bejol from France, half a point behind on 7 out of 8. There was only two rounds to go after this match. Abajal really needs to press for the win with the white pieces. So we see e4, e5, knight f3, and knight f6, the Petrov's defense. A very solid opening, making a comeback in top play, especially when black is happy with the draw. So knight takes e5, d6, but now we get a shock. Knight takes f7. This is the Cochrane Gambit. Extremely rare. Um, perhaps Abajal is mindful of the need to win here, it's taking a chance. It's considered theoretically dubious, and there's only 122 games in, in uh, chessgames.com with this opening, and quite a majority, though, lead to a quick win for white. So it's a very difficult opening to defend against, with black, especially black Petrov's players, not being comfortable with having their positions smashed open like this. So king must take f7, and we get g4. Now there are quite a number of options here that black can play. Fernandez chooses to go with g6. Um, planning to fianchetto the bishop. It's quite a rare response. Um, white continues with knight c3. And now c6. Fianchettoing immediately would have led to bishop c4 check, um, which is how most of the historical games continued. But black tries to show up the center here, uh, where bishop c4 can now be met by, by d5. c6 has only been played once in chessgames.com's database, in a game from 2001. So it's really uncharted territory for both players so early on. And bishop d3 is played, bishop e2 was also an option. Now at this point, my engine gave bishop e7 serious consideration which gives up the plan of the unshattering and then followed by a king g7 and rook f8. So they even looked at king g7 immediately but uh, while it still evaluates the position as better for black it's clearly a very difficult position to defend over the board. Black continues with the original plan bishop to g7 and we get castle. Now what to do with the black rook? The rook e8 was suggested here, but black plays rook to f8. A square, which we'll see later, may not be the best square for the rook. So white, although behind on uh, material, has a strong lead in development, and black needs to respond accurately to weather coming storm. Natural move, bishop g5. Again, black has a number of possibilities. Queen a5, there's queen b6, there's h6. My engine eventually settled on uh, h6 or queen b7. Unfortunately, the, the live feed died at this point. Um, and the game downloads with the time controls are only available in a proprietary format. So I couldn't see the time controls, which would have been interesting because in yesterday's game, uh, Fernandez was getting into time trouble and he was doing so again which is likely facing this kind of an attack so it would provide an interesting perspective on the on the move played. So black now played queen to a5 probably with the idea of threatening the bishop on g5 as well as supporting the, the center but after this black seems to have lost all advantage now watch keep an eye on this queen at a5 how it fails to be of any use in the game and is actually a hindrance the rest of the game. So queen a5 is perhaps not the best response for black. White presses with bishop c4 check and black responds with the pawn push when perhaps bishop e6 was suggested here as well. We get e takes d5 and now black plays a rather dubious move king to g8. Probably realized at this point that exchanging c takes d, knight takes pawn, knight takes pawn, can be followed by 
d4. Do you see that? The weakness of the queen now, with the white knight on d5, the pawn on b4, and the bishop on c4. It's not a great position for black at all. And also with the king being on f7, uh, the white queen can come out with f3 in check. So really not fun for black to be in this position. The suggested line that was to continue with knight d5, knight takes d5 with the black, black knight. Knight takes d5 and c takes d5, and then white can still play b4 and win the pawn back, but uh, at least it's possibly better than what happened in this game. So now, of course, with the king having gone to g8, we're just inviting the discovered attack. Discovered check, d takes c6, king goes to h8. So black has slowly made its way what it hopes is now a safe square, although he's now four, points uh, four pawns down for the knight. C takes b7, of course, continuing the gobbling, and bishop takes b7. So now the game has changed quickly, with the center having completely opened up, and white has to change plans, and that can be quite difficult to do this in a match where you, you're playing one sort of game and suddenly you're playing another sort of game. It requires a psychological adjustment. Um, of course the, the bishop, the white bishop on g5 here is still being threatened. So black plays queen to d2 and the black, uh, white plays queen to d2 sorry and the black knight comes out to c6. Pushing the pawn to d5. Is invited. So the pawn now is in a really nice square. It's protected by three pieces, blocking black's light squared bishop. Um, that's a good square for the pawn to be. Now black responded here with knight to e5, but let's have a look for a second at an alternative, which is knight to e7. So just continue here. White pushes the pawn to d6, knight plays into e5, we swap the knight, queen takes d2, bishop takes d2, and we get quite a wild line, you can see here, something like this, and uh, it evaluates potentially as better for black, um, although there's a lot of analysis and I probably didn't give it enough time, so can't say for sure what's happening, but it's, a, it's an interesting alternative. However, black didn't play that. Black played instead knight to e5. Of course, the bishop must retreat back to b3. Now, activating the rooks is natural. There's various alternatives, and this is the kind of thing that can be very difficult to differentiate between. Um, my engine at first suggested rook to c8, rook on a to c8, but uh, black plays rook on a, rook a to e8. Now rook e1 here for white might have been the best response, but white plays h3, which presumably is worried by a potential knight counterplay on g4 and the vulnerable f2 pawn. So after c3, after after h3, sorry, the knight goes back to f7. Black would love to have the bishop pair, <laughs> but of course white's having none of it. Moves back to e3. Bishop f4 potentially seemed better at first glance, um, looking after that d6 square, but bishop e3 does seem more solid in the long run. So now Black uses the opportunity to move the rook across to d8, free of the pin with the bishop when it was on g5. White brings the rook across, and black brings the knight to d6, which would have been protected with the bishop on f4. At this point, doubling the rooks on d7 and d8 was also a possibility for, for black. Now white decides to take the opportunity of the knight having moved away to swap. And this is perhaps why it might have been a better idea to leave the knight on f7 to prevent this. 
where really it's very difficult for Blackwell to know what the best plan is here. Knight comes to f5, chasing the queen. Queen goes back to f4, and the knight goes back to d6. I'm not really sure what Black was thinking at this point. Black's given up a tempo, and effectively only seeing the queen move from h6 to f4, which seems to have seems to have more opportunities there. So this doesn't seem to have been optimal play by black, although potentially there was again time travel and was trying to make quick moves. So white takes the open file with the rook, the f rook, moving to e1, and it now is really difficult for black. Mm, moves like even king to g8 are possibilities now to prevent or to avoid potential queen checks, the queen coming into e5. Even if the king on g8 seems counterintuitive because it's walking into that strong white diagonal again, but black doesn't seem to have too much to do here. And over the board, Fernandez finds only knight to h5. Moves the knight to the room. Queen comes into the center with a check on d4. And the knight must go back to g7, and things are really looking grim for black. Knight comes into e4, taking advantage of the space. And it's freeing up the C pawn now. So any hope of pressure for black on the on the F2 pawn is long gone. Black brings the rook across now to E8 to try and fight for the open file. But white can now connect the pawns on C4, and the position looks devastating. Black is hanging on. And here the engine struggle to find a good move for, for black, considering doubling the rooks, considering even a6, even rook a8 was considered for a second, trying to get the long stuck queen into the game with b4, but eventually settled on, on c8. But here black decides to swap the knights and then the rooks. It's not something you'd normally want to do here, but really black seems to have little better. At last, at least after all of that, queen can move off that a5 square, come across to b6, and be a little bit more in the game. Now queen for white, queen to e7, and then it chased away queen to f7, being quite strong here, so it is queen f4 and then rook up to rook d3, but white really has all the play and eventually settles on queen to e5. The rook can do a little more here, come across to e8, and queen c3. So what can black do? Not much. Black plays to queen to c5, could also play queen d4, possibly even rook e1. Sorry, now white. White could play queen to d4 or rook e1 here to try and exchange and force him the advantage, but um, goes with bishop to a4 instead. Chasing the rook. Rook comes to e2. We're hoping to have a little, so a little bit of counterplay, some sort of action down here. The most attacking move by black in the whole game. But white pushes with queen to f6. Black can do a little more here than king to g8 to avoid the, the threat of a f mate on f8. If the pawn gets pushed to d6, it blocks the queen's retreat, and black's king would be in trouble, so the black's king must come across to, to g8. And now we get bishop to d7, which threatens to see bishop to e6, and coupled with the d in the c pawns, an overwhelming position and it looks really finished for black at this point. Here white misses a trick, so if you want to you can pause the video and see if you can spot a continuation. Um, it's quite a tricky one to find, so I'm going to give you the move as well. So if you can't find the move, I'm going to give you what the move is and you can pause the video now as well and see why this is a good move. Of course, first rook must go back to e2. 
Now we get the move for white. The move is b4. Can you see why? Pause and see if you can see why b4 is a good move. Queen takes, bishop check. Now here, black must take with the rook. Black would prefer to take with the knight, but do you see now that the rook, if it's left on e7, would be blocking the queen's retreat to f8. And if the queen was still on c5, it could at least go to c8. So that's the key, and that's why getting the, the black queen off c is a good move, because uh, now can't go back and retreat. If we just continue this line, we'd see here it's all over for black. And it's really finished. So if we go back, white missed the b4 and instead played bishop to e6 straight away. And now black can take with the knight. Um, d takes e6. And at this point, black blended, playing bishop to c6, which blocks the queen's retreat back to, to c8. Although they thought they could protect against rook d8 with bishop to e8, they can't. Can you see the move? Pause for a second. See if you can find the move, after which black resigned. The move is rook takes e8. Now, of course, black must take, but even that provides no protection because queen comes in check. King must go across, and the rook is lost. King has to come back, we get check. And it's a, que a clear uh, <laughs> mate in nine here. I won't expect you to find it or me to find it, but basically white here can just push the pawn and there's no defense for, for black. It's all over. So it's a great game by GM Abigail, showing how the attacking opportunities that come from even a theoretically dubious opening can be used to pressurize the opponent into making mistakes. So now, after that fantastic win, he leads the tournament by half a point with only two rounds to go. Thanks for watching. Catch more videos on chesstape.com.